How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. This is Deck Ready, my channel all about the Steam Deck. In today's video, we've got three topics to cover. Starting out with the greatest settings source of all time for the Steam Deck is here and it's free. We're also gonna talk about the great update deck filter just got that shows you what games I'm playing on my Steam Deck. After that, we're gonna talk about yet another game that got a deck focused upgrade. And finally, I'm gonna give you some great settings for Dying Light 2 on Steam Deck because it is shockingly running very well. I hope you had a great weekend playing a ton of video games games, I had the craziest weekend ever. It all started with, uh, you know, the weather going from warm to cold rapidly. I always get insane drippage, post nasal drip, whatever you want to call it. I'm still dealing with that. So you're going to have to bear with me. Then my power goes out because of a windstorm for a day and a half. So no internet, no charging my phone, can't use the fridge. That was awesome. Then the drain pipe that goes from my second floor all the way down to the basement, that cracked. So I had to cut open the wall on every floor to figure out where the crack was. I replaced that. I think we're in the clear. I'm leaving to go to a Halloween concert on Friday. I come down here to grab my wedding ring and then I'm sloshing through water. I'm like, oh great. What happened now? So that pipe I originally replaced, that's dry. My water heater also decided to uh, shoot water out of the side of it. So I figure out that it's the high pressure valve gauge, whatever. I replace that. That is fixed. I think everything is fine now, but I did get enough time in to finally wrap up a hundred percent of dying light the following. So I got a little bit of game time in once I get over this post nasal drip shit. I think everything will be fine. I hope there's no more water issues in my future. But yeah, I hope you had a great weekend playing a ton of video games. Anyway, let's get into the first news story here, which is all about my friend Felix, because he's been taken over when it comes to just making great apps that work well with the Steam Deck. This new one is called Deck Settings, and I'm sure you can figure out what it's for. But the coolest thing is, unlike Deck Filter, this one's completely free. So you go to the App Store or the Google Play Store, you download Deck Settings. I'm pretty sure it's one word, but it might not be. It'll come up if you search it. And all it does, you type in the game you're looking for, the page comes up, you get your settings. So like they've got ProtonDB, it's got Steam Deck HQ, it's got Share Deck. And if you want more information, you can click into any of those individually. In my experience, it works great. And Deck Ready's in the credits because I helped him fine tune some features. He came up with this so fast. Like we talked about this like two months ago, I want to say, and he turned it around that quickly. I love stuff like this because, you know, the worst thing is when, you know, you like you're going through what I went through over the past weekend. You finally get an hour to sit down and play some games and relax and just decompress. And then you're like, oh, I want to play something new like Hitman World of Assassination. And you're like, oh, it looks like it's optimized for deck. It's verified on deck. Then you're like, ah, these settings aren't working that great. So you spend like another 45 minutes on YouTube trying to find settings that work. And then suddenly you just want to go to bed because you started playing games at 11 at night. This eliminates that by being an app that you can open up on your phone completely for free that shows you every setting that could possibly exist for whatever game. Steam Deck HQ is a great source. I use their settings all the time. And one thing I really like that they do is they uh, give you performance settings for a lot of games and then quality settings. So if you're fine playing 30 FPS to get a little bit better image quality out of a game, they'll give you that. But if you just want the raw, straight up good performance, 40 to 60 FPS, they give you that as well. And then if there's games that are just like a happy middle ground between performance and quality, they'll only give you one review. They've got great people writing over there. My suggestion for them is go back and update your review views more because we exist in a world where games are coming out like 80 to 85% done and then they're completely different a year out from when they launch. So there's a ton of games that I've played when they came out on the Steam Deck that ran like absolute garbage and then I go back to try them out and I discover that not only do they run great now, you can even push the settings up a little bit higher like Dying Light 2 which we're talking about towards the end of the video. So like deck settings is great. Steam Deck HQ is also great. There's my one recommendation for them if they're watching this video. I like like Proton DB is the second source because if there's ever games like Hitman World of Assassination, for example, if you use the Steam Deck's built in frame limiter, it causes major camera stutter. But you can use a Mango HUD command to limit the frame rate with uh, launch commands, and that eliminates the stutter. So, like, I locked it to 40 FPS. The default medium and high preset that it comes with when you download it works phenomenally. I would have never known to do that if I didn't check Proton DB. And then my last ditch source is the Steam community. Like if you go to a game's community page on Steam and check discussions, there's usually some people who share great settings in there. I found the best settings ever for Resident Evil 4 Remake to keep it locked at 30 FPS even when you're looking down a scope. I didn't see that on any website. I found these perfect settings right there on the Steam community forums. My number one would be Steam Deck HQ. My number two would be ProtonDB. Number three, Steam Community Forum.
platforms. Number four, figure it out yourself, which should be a lot easier with deck settings. But Felix wasn't content with just making deck settings. He also upgraded deck filter to have a really cool feature. So if you go to the new discover tab, you'll see a little box that has my logo, the deck ready channel banner. And if you click on it, it has a live updated feed of what I've been playing on Steam. So right now you'll see Dying Light, the original game at the top, because I just finished a 70 hour playthrough of that game. And I was really, you know, happy to see that the how long to beat for 100% was around 62 hours. It took me around 70 because I played it in chunks. And I think that includes when I bought the game pretty recently. I started a playthrough and then I let enough time pass where I wanted to start over. So like my 100% playthrough, including the following, took around 62 hours, I would say. So how long to beat was accurate in that. But you can also see that I've been playing Battlefield, the Crew Motorfest. You can see the full rotations of games that I'm playing. And the cool thing is it updates live. Like it pulls directly from my Steam page what I'm playing. And there's a couple other sources in there as well. So if you just want a quick and dirty recommendation, check that because I'm generally playing on my Steam Deck unless I'm playing Battlefield 6 because of course that only works on Windows. Same goes for Hunt Showdown 1896. I think that works on Steam Deck, but I would never play that game with a controller. It's just like way too competitive and you need pinpoint accuracy. I just don't think it would work all that well. So like outside of those two games, I'm probably on my Steam Deck so you can see exactly what I've been playing. So yeah, that app is not free. It's $4.99. It is so worth it. It packs in so many features. I talk about it in sponsor ships all the time so I'm not going to cover it too heavily here but yeah Felix is like single-handedly taking on the Steam Deck usability world and doing stuff that Valve has not been able to figure out how to do like make settings that are actually easily findable that work really well so huge shout out to Felix check out deck settings and check out my discover page on deck filter but for the second news story let's talk about yet another game that just got a deck focused update and this one is Dead Island 2 so this game I don't know man like I thought it was going to suck ass if I'm being honest just because of how long it took but when I played it I actually got a review key for it I was not only impressed that it was a complete game but it looked good it ran well I had a blast I actually beat it before it came out and then I went back when all my friends got it to play through their games with my character and I got to bring over all my stuff and it was a great experience because unlike Dying Light which mixes the zombie combat with a uh, parkour you're a little bit more planted slower it's very heavy very gory and they did differentiate it from dying light enough where it doesn't feel like a ripoff even though Techland made the original dead island dead island 2 was made by a different dev i thought it was a pretty good game but it was an epic exclusive for a long time like i think over a year it was exclusive to the epic store so when it launched on steam it was full price once again and i waited forever for it to come down in price i picked it up found it ran okay on steam deck like if you lowered the settings to the low preset you could get 40 fps and at medium it was a fairly locked 30. But now there's an update that just came out that removed De Nuvo Anti-Cheat, which uh, notoriously causes performance issues in games. Nothing crazy. It's usually like five or six FPS, but if you're playing on a lower spec machine like the Steam Deck, five or six FPS can make a world of difference. So whereas before at 30 FPS, I could keep it at medium. If I wanted a locked 40, I'd keep it around low. Now you can basically squeeze out if you're on the Steam Deck OLED 40 FPS at medium, but if you want the most consistent performance keep it at 30 medium but it'll be even more consistent than it was before they've released multiple dlc packs and i think a horde mode since this game came out so if you played it when it launched i remember it being just a little bit buggy and there were some progression issues like quest chains would break and things like that and you'd have to reload saves all of that's been ironed out and if you want just good gory zombie combat that's a little bit heavier like you're planting your feet more and like slamming the zombies and they're flying backwards and stuff and you just want to explore like a pretty dang good recreation of Los Angeles like as someone who lived in LA for 10 years the multiple neighborhoods that they represent in this game as small maps are pretty much one-to-one -one. like I could figure out where to go based on just my knowledge of being a person who lived in LA which I can't really experience in any games outside of like the division or true crime streets of LA so that game I don't know I guess my my expectations were like on the floor to be fair but once it came out I was consistently impressed with the quality of it i'm pretty sure it's on sale for halloween right now so if you played through dying light and you want a zombie game that's a little bit of a different flavor i would recommend that but for me as one of you who messaged me on steam when i was playing dying light at the same time as them uh, i am dying my light so hard so i wrapped up dying light one and the following i thought the following
following was great. I can't believe I waited so long to play that game because it feels like it could have been released as a standalone game. The Doom Buggy is awesome. The map is huge. I like the difficulty bump. It kind of sucked that uh, you can't use parkour pretty much anywhere in it because I finished the main game with my combat maxed out all the way, obviously, and then my survivor level maxed out all the way, but I had like level 20 out of 24 in parkour. I finished the following after 100%ing it with level 21 parkour. So if I wanted to max that out, I'd have to go back to Haran and do all the agility challenges. And I just like, I wanted to move on, but overall great experience on the Steam Deck. And as someone who played Dying Light 2 at launch and was like, this is not a finished game. I'm really impressed with the updates that they've done over the years. Like I kind of kept up with it and I was like, I'll go back to it when they're done. Now that they've released Dying Light the Beast, I'm fairly positive. They're pretty much wrapped up on Dying Light like two. So I didn't assume it would run well on the Steam Deck because it was really hard to run on my 3080 PC back in the day, but I've been playing it. I'm like three hours in and it works great. So I'm going to put the settings I'm using on screen. It's FSR balanced and a mix of medium and high. It says low, but a lot of the low options are only high or low. There's no medium. And honestly, it looks really good. It's not a perfectly locked 40. Like when you're running around on the rooftops and you do a big jump, you might see a little little bit of a frame dip, but there's such heavy motion blur when you're mid air that I don't even really notice it after a while. Also, when you're in heavy combat zones, I'm consistently impressed that the frame rate stays absolutely locked because when the game came out, it would be great when you were running across rooftops and stuff. But then if you got in a fight, you would see the frame rate absolutely tank. So I'm glad they fixed that issue. And I haven't found the side quest yet, but one of my biggest issues with the game when it came out was that it didn't have guns. Like they gave you like a boomstick, which was a single shot shotgun it was really hard to craft ammo for i'm pretty sure you could get a crossbow towards the end of the game but that was really it there's a side quest that shows up fairly early on now that gives you guns and if you've played dying like the beast they're very similar in how they handle and control to the beast in the sense that they're much better than the original dying light and uh, i wasn't a big fan of the color palette when it came out because it was so bright and happy and i'm playing a zombie game and it's a sequel to one of the coolest horror inspired zombie games ever so I'm happy to see that they've added in different color grading options. And there's even one that's heavily inspired by the original Dying Light called Haran Sunset. So it seems like for the past few years, they've just been listening to the community's bitching and fixing everything that they've been bitching about. So I'm really happy about that because I was one of those people consistently bitching about how different it was from the first game. I like Aiden. I think he's cool. I like that he's a little bit faster than, you know, Kyle Crane was back in the original Dying Light. You've got a little bit more floatiness to his jumps, but like his main story of finding his sister, like it sounds so callous, but I don't care about his sister because she's not my sister. I just don't give a shit. But when you get into the world uh, and you start picking sides between the survivors and the peace, keepers it's it's a lot of fun like it's an okay story in a great world with great combat great parkour and it's like gameplay is what they focused on most so they did the right thing honestly and they improved the story for dying Light the beast since i'm about halfway through that so if you're looking for a great game to play on the steam deck i highly recommend the first dying light in the following expansion because you can basically max it out and get a locked 40 and then i'm happy to say you can move right on to dying light 2 and get a ton of hours of zombie kill action. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got for you in today's video. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.